This is Brian Sykes with Ad Journey and Jumpstart You. Um, what I've got happening today is what I'm calling uh, a slice of time. And this was inspired by the work of Benny Productions, who has a website um, or an Instagram account and a YouTube channel uh, where he creates what he calls micro worlds. Now, his Instagram account is micro worlds official. And uh, what's really cool is when I saw his stuff, I was kind of like, oh, that's neat. I like what he's doing in Photoshop and the way he's playing with this. But I thought what I would like to do is challenge myself with putting together one of these myself. And so that I'm not exactly copying what he's got, uh, I decided instead of it being a totally made up thing, what if you were to take this concept of a micro world and it literally be cut out segment from something that actually occurred. And so my first one that I decided to play around with is from the lunar landing. And this is, of course, the very first time that a uh, man landed on the moon. And we've got uh, the astronaut in the foreground with uh, the lunar landing module and a buggy in the background. And uh, so what I've decided to do is I wanted to create this 3D capture uh, so that it looks as though you're seeing a piece of time literally encapsulated in a, a three-dimensional space. So this is me playing in Photoshop. Uh, not something I get a lot of time to do on my own. Uh, usually it's always project-based and uh, solving problems for clients. And so having this as a creative challenge was sort of like getting out my pen and paper So walking through this whole process, it's, it's, uh, it's a multi-layered, multi-faceted piece. Now, what you're seeing as you're watching this is I found a, the basic image I wanted to work from. And the fun thing about stuff like this is never do you have everything nailed down at the beginning. You usually have a rough idea of where you're going with things, what you want to do. So I knew I was going to be working with this 3D cube and building my space coming off of the cube with very hard edges uh, as far as, as though it were literally sliced from the surface that was a part of and put into this freeze-dried package. Uh, so with that base, then I needed to make it look like the top was all one unit. And because of the size of the image and how it was positioned, um, in order to scale it properly, the edges simply didn't go all the way to the left and right hand side that I wanted them to. So I had to bring in another image uh, to drop those in in order to create the left and right hand side. And uh, I feathered in the overlay so it looks as though it's blending in. And I'm going to adjust the colors as you're seeing here um, so that this is, it's really, I'm taking out the saturation and adjusting the darkness uh, to create the value tone that I'm after. Actually, get this refined, just what we're looking for. Uh, this is playing back at one fourth the speed of production. Uh, a lot of other little interruptions that were taking place in the process, but I wanted to kind of capture the whole thing. Um, so, this is not a piece that I'm looking to sell uh, in that regard. Uh, I'm not purchasing these images, I'm just utilizing what's available. So, literally, I went to Google and did a search for First Man in Space USA. Uh, to find the resource images. And this piece that I'm looking for is I'm looking for a lunar buggy um, that I can drop into the screen. And I found one that I kind of like. I thought I might use this. Um, of course, it takes me to some other location. I decided I didn't want that. So I'm grabbing this image and I was originally thinking of putting it on the right hand side. If you notice, it's missing its wheel on the right hand side of the original image. Uh, simply because it cut off a frame. So I drop it in here with the idea of coming back to it. Uh, later on, I decided I really didn't want that or need that in order to complete the image, so it was left out. Uh, so here I'm, of course, masking out this buggy because I found a replacement for it. I wasn't going to try to fix it. And uh, like I said, most of the time when I'm doing things like this for client work, uh, if ever needed, then there's a lot of leeway for making choices and solutions along the way. I have a general target that I'm going towards, refining that 
just takes place during the process. Um, I know that I'm planning on knocking out that uh, mountain that's behind him. Uh, but the first thing I've got to do is cover up this space. There's a gap here uh, where the buggy was. I need to blend it in and make it disappear. And uh, so that'll take place real fast. But like I was saying is you never have everything nailed down exactly, at least not me. Um, I build it as I go uh, until I'm kind of reaching the objective that I have in mind. And uh, just like when I'm painting in person, uh, whenever I'm creating artwork, it's I let the artwork speak to me. It always seems kind of strange to say, but a lot of times you don't know until you actually see it. Uh, oh, this is something else that was kind of interesting. Because I had uh, Loom as the tool I was using to record my screen, that way I can get the full effect. I, I like for people to be able to see everything on my screen in regards to the full spread of Photoshop tools so you can see the entire process. Uh, but because Loom has the uh, show cursor uh, with the glow in play, uh, what happens is I was really having a challenging time seeing my actual shape icon cursor because the yellow glow is significantly larger. So this was an interesting challenge to me as I'm kind of playing with this. Oh, uh, what I didn't start with, let you guys know, is I basically modeled the framework that uh, Benny Productions uses for his micro worlds when I laid out the design for this page. Um, I liked his cube, I liked his cast shadows, I liked the splatters. With mine, I actually used a splatter brush. Um, and the splatter brush was one of the the brush sets that I got from, let me think of the name of this company. Um, I'll come back to that one. I'm trying to remember what the name of the, the company is. Anyway, the, the fun thing with this is, this is something I tell clients when I'm teaching. I tell them to find projects that have really no distinct definitive use in their business. In other words, it's not something that has an end result that they're looking for um, to help their business because usually whenever you've got something that's tied directly to solving a problem that your business is addressing, in other words, you're working for your company or working for your business, then your priorities change and there you're looking for a more definitive guarantee where when you're doing a loose project, something like this, this is not something I'm going to um, put out there to be sold. This isn't something I'm looking to profit from financially. This was just a fun endeavor uh, to challenge my creativity, to try to copy an idea that I saw with the micro worlds uh, that had been produced uh, by Benny Productions. Uh, and it was just kind of a fun endeavor. Now, I may look at doing things like this a little more professionally if, if somebody was interested in you know, it would be a profitable endeavor. Um, but anyway, this was just kind of a neat little thing to play with. The idea, though, what I'm getting at is when you leave things loose in the sense of not nailed down to, accomplish, to accomplishing something that's needed, it allows you more freedom and flexibility when you're experimenting. Uh, you have less a tendency to feel constrained or, or feel tied to performance. And uh, that can be a really good thing. Um, in this case, because there's no other result other than just the fun of the exercise, uh, I had freedom to play around and not look for it to be specifically lined up with some ulterior motive or, or creative endeavors besides the fact that I just wanted to have fun. Now one thing I ran into with this thing that was really interesting is this top part going against the black black sky and knowing what was true shadow and what was the actual sky. Um, there's not enough fine detail because this isn't something we're going to turn around and sell. I didn't take the time to do the research and get an actual lunar module uh, to study and you know, compare and see where things were going. Now, if you're going for a refined piece, you definitely would take those steps and make sure it lined up.
the little fine details, that's where things really start coming together and you go, okay, this, this looks like it was intentional. I found this really cool um, layered sand, uh, something from out in the Midwest, I believe. And I really like the look of, of this and I decided to just use this as my sides. And of course the color's wrong, so we're gonna adjust that. Um, but this gives me a, a piece to work from. This is one thing I dislike about Photoshop, and I've been working with Photoshop since it was Aldous. So I've been around Photoshop for quite a long time. Uh, kind of ages me a bit. But whenever you've got a shifted or distorted image, the new edges um, become the default corners. And what I mean by that is when you've thrown it out of whack or you've changed its, its angle, distorted in some capacity, once you've accepted that distortion, Photoshop basically creates a new square of, in which that object fits. And so when you choose to modify again, it doesn't go to the default corners that was there before, it goes to the new corners. Uh, that's one thing I wish Photoshop would adjust. All right, what I did here is I combined both of these layers and I've taken the saturation out. I'm going to colorize it ever so slightly to give it a blue hue. And I'm gonna drop some shadow down on top of this thing. I cut it out, I'm gonna paste it again, and I'm gonna darken this element um, in space. So I'm, as you see, I just brought that left-hand side. It needs to be more shadowy, so I'm gonna deepen that. And uh, a lot of times I can do that with brightness. This is a, a nice little thing. And contrast, uh, adjusting brightness and contrast for me really worked well on this piece. And I didn't like the super clean edges, so I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on it ever so slightly. That'll take off that hard edge and let it not be the focus of the attention. The distortion in gradient layers, um, that accomplishes what it's supposed to do, and it's still seen even though I blurred it. Uh, you notice I just lightened that right hand side as well. The reason I was doing this is because I wasn't too happy with how they the two joined up. I was playing back and forth with making sure that the lineup fit within the original box that I've got there. And again, going with the distortions, notice how far out I'm having to grab what is now the new corner uh, for the shape. All right, this thing's coming together pretty well. Um, remnants. Remnants are something that kind of can be annoying. And in this case, what I'm trying to do is create some little remnant edges. Um, I'm actually masking around that edge so it's a softer edge, it's not so hard. And uh, what this does for me is it provides a less than perfect. It looks more like it was literally chiseled. And so because that imperfection is there, it looks more natural. So just working on these little fine details along the edges to create these less than perfect inventions uh, so that it looks, if you get in close enough, more like actual cut dirt uh, for a base. Okay. So almost wrapping up, we're just going to cut in here around the edges. Again, this is what I was talking about before. This would be a little bit tricky simply because it was hard to tell where the true separation and I've got that crazy glow on the side. Um, without that, this thing could have gone a lot faster. Depending on the size that you're looking at this thing, um, it'd be really hard to see the little nuance uh, motions that I'm making with the mouse in order to do all the edits.
one thing I wanted to make sure was that the flag had a nice bold Christmas to it. So that I'll come back in in just a second here and multiply it. duplicated flag is what I'm literally cutting out right now. Now you see the name has been changed. It's Slices of Time, Lunar Landing. It's going to be my first original edition. And there we have it, folks. The Slices of Time, Lunar Landing. Uh, the first of hopefully many projects uh, to be done using this Benny's Productions Micro Worlds concept. Hope you enjoy it.